Hello and welcome back to another M Crater tutorial. Today what we're going to be covering is the yaw direction of the block in the procedure. I'll be showing a few examples of how it actually works and we will be looking at the script that I've created and how you can basically use that script into basically integrating directions for northeast, northwest, southeast, and southwest, as well as any other angle between. So stay tuned. So we are in a brand new world. We are facing south directly. You can tell because the text on the screen that is being printed is exactly zero. And what I'll be demonstrating first is the actual logical part behind how the block works. So it hopefully will be a little bit easier to understand what's going on in the procedure that I've set up. So as you can see on the text, it's facing zero. If we turn to our left, it will start going into negative numbers. Now, for the most part, this doesn't seem too out of the normal. If we go to the other side, it should be positive, which is correct. Now, a lot of people are saying, including other people that I've known, uh, to basically test between negative 179.9 and 180 I think so I can guarantee that's not what's going on here these aren't the exact values there's actually two parts of the script that needs to be tested for and it actually does go up to 360 so if we go and start rotating now we are facing I'll open up the F3 screen so it's a little easier to see so if we take a look at the facing direction just above or just just uh, three lines down from the coordinates, we can tell we're actually facing east now. So we're around 95, 95 degrees or 90 degrees, depending on where you're looking, right? So east is 90. That doesn't seem out of the ordinary. Let's uh, head over to north, and you'll notice that it's actually over 179.9. So if we go the other direction, it'll be the same at results. It'll actually be over 180. So let's continue going and we'll do a full cycle. Uh, now we are facing west, which is far past the rotation that we were known to actually supposed to be using. And we'll go all the way to 360. And as you can see, the numbers have just changed to 3.5. 45, negative 3.45. If we go back over, it's now back over to the 360, uh, the higher value of that. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, well, why is it going back to the lower number? It's because it's actually on a loop on the client side. So if we go the other direction, we'll have to do a full rotation. And then we're now back in the positive side of things. We can do a couple rotations around, make sure it updates, and then we'll do one more rotation just for good measure. And as you can see, we've basically turned completely two times around. And now if we go back this way, it will need to go back two full rotations until we reach the negative numbers again. So as you can see, we're back in negative numbers. Okay. So with that out of the way, basically we know that it has some sort of loop function. So it will continue counting up past 360, even though it's supposed to be only 180 and in positive and negative numbers. The other thing that we know is there are two sides to the script. There is both negative and positive numbers. So we're going to have to actually create a little bit of a script in order to make this be able to test for certain directions. Now, before I do anything else, let's quickly take a look at an example of the script that I do have set up so we can basically see how it is basically working. So let's just pause right here and I'll uh, go into the next clip.
So I have a diamond in my inventory. This I've basically just set up so we can basically test if the rotation. So as you can see, I'm holding the diamond and we are facing, we're actually moving forward of the direction west. If we turn to this direction, uh, we are out now facing north or I think it's northwest. And if we face north, then it, we're going north and east uh so northeast south or east and then southeast so you you get the idea so if we actually go back to the negative rotation now because it's a negative number it's a little bit hard to test so i've had to basically invert a few things and as you can see we're actually going still forward so the script that i've basically created is very adaptable and we'll be able to continue testing for the proper direction and do a uh, basically return a certain value and then basically get do a function based on that value. So let's go into M creator and I will show you the script that I have set up for both the, the way I'm testing for the actual value of yaw and then we'll take a look at the script that I have for moving the entity in the direction that we are actually walking right now. Now, I'm not actually touching the keys on my keyboard. This is all done through the item. So we're just using movement vector to basically move the entity forward. So let's go into mcrater and I will show you how this all works. We have two different types of things happening right now. We have the condition that I have uh, for the actual script. Now this can be expanded. Uh, you can add more varying, varying levels between where you want the entity to actually be facing. This is basically what the script looks like. It's not too long. It's long enough where it's a little bit unreasonable for something that should be a little bit simpler but it's just the way that y'all basically works. So I'll cover basically what's going on in these sections here. First off, we have a general if statement at the top. This is basically testing if the entity is looking at a, uh, looking a specific direction. Now we know that it's in a negative format as well as a positive format. So this is where it gets a little bit more confusing in to the way we actually have to set it up. We can't just target a certain rotation and then uh, have it go, ha make the player go that direction because there is both negative and positive. So we not only have to convert the negative number into a positive number so we can actually test, but we also have to do a lot more, more complex stuff like test for the actual, um, the actual ro rotation of the angle, and then we have to assign something. So I'll cover the second part in just a second. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So what we're doing here is we're basically testing if the yaw of the current entity, which is us, the, of the entity that we're running the script from, and we're testing if it's less than zero. So anything below zero, we want to run this script here. What we're doing here is we're going to set the local yaw, a local variable that we have right here, and it's a number variable. We're going to set it to absolute, and then we're going to get the yaw direction of what we've basically tested. What this will do is absolute will basically convert it to the same value, but a positive number or vice versa. And then what we're doing is we're going to set a local variable called is negative, and we're going to set this to true. Now what this will do is it will make it a lot easier for us to run the rest of the script to know what direction we need to get the player to go. So we'll cover that in just a second. And then if it's basically a positive number, then it's going to run this else statement down here because it's not going to be below zero. So it won't be in the negatives. So it will be anywhere from zero to positive. And if that is, if it is zero to positive, then it's what it's going to do is it's going to set the local variable for is negative to false. And then it's going to set the local yaw, a variable to just the yaw direction. 
So after it's done that, what we need to do is actually set up our if statement for our range area for our rotation of the entity. So we know that we need to go somewhere between 360 and zero, give or take. So there is a little bit of more math involved. Now, I'm not entirely sure how the mod block works, but I know how it actually functions. So basically when you use mod, it takes a solid number that has a loop that continues going from a number and then cycles to a default number again. So in our case, we know that it was going between zero and 360 and then it would go back to zero again. So what we needed to do is we need to basically get the local variable then we need to set it to mod and then we need to test for the angle, the total angles that we basically want to have that cycle reset. So in our case, there is only 360 degrees in a full rotation, so we want it to be 360. Now this is a separate part to the actual condition that we're testing down here. This is basically our general range test from this part and this part. So this is just where we're testing for the range. This is a math operator, which allows us to test for a range between 360 and zero. So basically what we're doing in layman terms is we're going is the angle from zero to 360 equal to or greater than zero and less than 255. So basically that's what's going on here. If that's true, then what we're doing is we're going to return a value of self. Now that's going to be a big role when we actually create or implement the script into something else. What we're doing with the return values is we're going to actually use a little bit of um, extra procedure to simplify this so we can run this from a main script and then what we're going to do is actually call this procedure or this condition when we're actually running the script itself. So I haven't covered how to do this. I'm actually fairly new at how this all works myself, but uh, Golderion, one of our MC toolkit developers have actually explained it really well to me and it was really easy to set up once I figured it all out. So basically what we're doing here is we're just returning a string value of self. And then down here, we're testing basically for the rotation. And then we're testing if it's negative, if it's true, then we're going to basically go southwest. If it's false, if it's a positive number, then we're gonna go southeast. And then it's going to go into the other directions. So if you wanted to make a direction between these values, you could insert a if sta else if statement, and then you could basically expand this, this uh, script a little bit more, test for the rotation between these two values, and then what you would want to do is create a new return value for this particular number. So let's quickly do that, and I will show you how that would basically work in action. <laughs> So the first thing that you need to do is you need to click on the gear icon and we're just going to do a little section right in here so we can basically just have a little bit, or uh, actually let's do it right down here. We'll do it two blocks down. So we'll put an if statement right here. This will be easier to actually see how it all works. So the next thing that we need to do is we actually need to duplicate this part of the script. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get the value between 67.5 and we're going to get the value between um, the value between the 67.5 and 112.5. So we're going to do some sort of range between that. So I'm going to say probably 100 uh, 0.5. Now you can put any value you would want into this number, but you also have to update the bottom one so it's 100 between that value as well. So basically what we've done is we've basically just customized it so it's 70, um, 67.5, then it goes into our equal to or, ma or, equal to or greater than 67.5, 
and then we've added our custom number. Now you can change the range between any of these three here, but it should have the ending one here equivalent to the starting one here and the ending one here to the starting one here. Now, once you've done that, all you need to do is test for your negative coordinates. And we can do this by basically duplicating that. And we're going to put just a simple variable um, between these values right here. So as you can see, we've basically just assigned a southwest and southeast value of two. So we know that it's going to be a second value of this part right here. Now, what we'll do in another procedure is actually test for the string if we want to know exactly if they're facing this particular direction. So let's take a look at the other script now and we'll see how this string can be used in a actual procedure for a condition. <laughs> This is where the update tick comes in and I'll explain how this all works. We don't actually need this. This is this message right here was just basically allowing us to print the text to the screen for demonstration purposes. What we're mostly interested in is this part right here. So what's going on in this part is we're going to create a condition where we're going to test for a certain rotation. And to do that, we need to test for a return value from this particular string. So in our case, if we are testing for this value here that we just created, then we need that value. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to logic, grab a string operator. We're also going to need a text value. So we're going to grab that under text. We're going to paste our return value into this part right here. And then we need to go down to the advanced tab and grab a call procedure and get return value. And then what we're going to do is place that here. And then we're going to call our procedure with our condition for the script. So the script again is the script right here. And what this is going to do is it's going to basically test for a return value that we've basically just created. And then it's going to do whatever action you wish to do in this little do section. So in our case, with the original script that I had, I had the script basically test if the diamond was in the main plan, main hand of the entity. And then I've basically tested for the direction that the entity was facing. So north, northeast, east, southeast, south, southwest, west, and northwest. And then I've basically set the movement vector for that particular entity based on the proper velocity of what direction they need to go. So that's basically all we've done is we're testing for the return value, which again is just the return value that we've basically set up here. So this one, that one, and this will automatically adjust it based on the proper direction for the entity on which the entity is facing. So you, if you want to use the script, you can basically download it from GitHub and I will leave the link to that particular page in the description. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.